welcome everyone. Uh, we are here tonight to continue the hearing on the Orange Avenue Project Zone Change. Um, if anyone would like to come up to speak with regards to the zone change only, please come up to the microphone, state your name and your address for the record. <coughs> Is there anyone who would like to speak? There's somebody. Oh, I'm sorry. How are you? <laughs> How are you, Mayor? Good. Nice to see you. Is this on? It is. Hi. Uh, my name is Jeff Oppenheim. I'm the mayor in the village of Montebello. And I wanted to address you regarding the zone change in this project uh, in a little bit of a general terms. Um, from the perspective and speaking as the mayor of Montebello, uh, which obviously is the next door village, we obviously depend and rely upon your downtown and the people in our village utilize the restaurants and the services provided which is a really wonderful benefit of living in Montebello and everyone enjoys very much the wonderful nature of Suffern. I, I think you have an opportunity here that's really pretty extraordinary and obviously the people in our village care a great deal about making sure that Suffern is a successful place. We share a lot of common interests. We even share overlapping uh, property and for example, in the uh, Novartis property, where we have a, a very common interest in seeing uh, things develop and move along in a way that's good for the people who live in our communities and good for business. I think you're facing a very good opportunity here uh, to have a developer come in and put a substantial investment in Suffern that can lead the way towards a lot of great opportunities and growth in your <coughs> village. I'd, I'd, not to get enmeshed in the particulars, which is obviously your decision in terms of zoning, but I do understand that there's a secondary benefit to having positive development in a neighborhood, and the alternative, which is having a deterioration of uh, a deterioration of the conditions in the village, which I think faces a lot of challenges. And let's face it, Suffern has a lot of challenges financially, and in terms of uh, which way the the neighborhood's going. I I think that the people in Montebello would be benefited by seeing Suffern move in a good direction, and I'd like to see a program like this. I think has the potential to kickstart a lot of other development in, in the neighborhood, in, in Suffern and in Montebello, that would move towards a great deal of uh, more revenue coming in. And I know in the short term there was a lot of discussion, and I certainly have been called a lot about the issues re pertaining to the pilot project. However, I think one of the things that the board really should consider, and consider now, is the fact that a, a lot of money being brought in and a lot of development, a lot of new people coming in is going to be great for the businesses in Suffern. New businesses will come in, new restaurants. Uh, and services that will accommodate those people, this is going to be an enormous opportunity for suffering to develop in the right way. We want to, you know, have it look a few years from now like Ridgewood, like some of the really great villages that people in Montebello like to go to visit to spend their money. We want them to spend it here in Suffern, and I think that will ultimately enrich the tax revenues that flow to you, but also flow to the school district, which indirectly benefits the people who live in my village. So, again, speaking as the mayor of the village of Montebello, I think it's a great thing when people want to come in and invest in our neighborhoods and, and put in good developments. We've encouraged it a great deal in our, our village. I look forward to working with this board and uh, with you, Mayor Abato, towards making sure that the same thing happens on the Novartis property. That's going to be good for everybody who lives in the area. So I hope you'll look long, long term here, long range, and think about the big picture because I think you've got a great, great opportunity here. And I, I would hate to see that opportunity lost. And years back, people look back at this and say, oh, gee, we could have done something differently here great opportunity and, and we didn't seize the moment. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you on behalf of the people in our village. We, we certainly understand and appreciate the difficult choices that you face, but we're, we're behind you 100 percent and anything we can do to help and support you, we're here to do. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you so much. Would anyone else like to speak with regards to the zone change? Hi, Ed Marconis, Two Willow Drive, Suffering. Good evening, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, in regards to the proposed zone change um, for the area in and around 120 Orange Avenue, I have some serious concerns regarding this change, regarding the zone change in particular, <coughs> which in turn uh, directly implies to the pilot and to the sale of 120 Orange Avenue. <coughs> These issues are directly resated, result, um, related to the zone change. Everything leading up to this zone change seems to have been an issue with the village people and the residents. Um, I would like to know a few questions of when the village initiated the sale of 120 Orange Avenue to Orange Avenue Associates, was that pre-2010? 
previous to the pilot agreement? Yes. Okay. Who initiated the sale? Was it the village or was it Orange Avenue? There's been no sale. There's been no sale. Who initiated the, the contract? There's no, yeah, there's no sale as of this date. Is there a contract in there, place? There is an unsigned contract, correct. An unsigned contract. Oh, it's a signed contract, I'm sorry. A signed there's contract a by the village? Yes. And who was representing Orange Avenue Associates? For Josh the sale? Go Josh Goldstein. And for the pilot? Josh Goldstein. And for the zoning? Josh Goldstein. Okay. He's the president of the He's the, the president of the company. Okay. Can I ask why 120 Orange Avenue was included in the budget of 2014 and 2015, in the village budget, the sale? Yes, it was because the building is up for sale. Did you sell it? We had a contract to sell it, correct. So it's still included in the budget? Yes. As revenue? Correct. If we don't sell it, what will we do? We will sell the, 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 the property. That's, to who? that's the plan. When we have to that Josh person, we'll let you know. No? I, I, he still has the opportunity to buy it, regardless of whether the pilot goes through or what, regardless of the project goes through. So if, if nobody purchases it, what do we do with the budget? We will we'll we'll go to cross that road when we come to it, Ed. Cross the road when you come to it. You know what? This is about the zone change, Ed. This yes. is not about the budget. This is not about what's included in the budget, what's not included into the budget. We're talking about a zone change. We're talking about the benefits and, and, and the comments and concerns of the zone change itself. What it will do for the area, what it will do for traffic, what it will do for all of the elements that pertain to the zone change. So if you have comments regarding that, I'd be happy to hear them. Okay, no, I do have the comments, which everything leading up to the zone change, to me, implies that, that, that that's the standard you're setting to initiate a zone change. No, that's not the standard. There's no standard being set. What we are looking at is the facts of how this will impact suffering as a zone change only. Any other questions or comments that you have outside of that, you can come to my office at any time, and I'd be happy to discuss them with you. Does the village board feel that way? Every member of the board, do they feel the same way you feel? About the fact about that- About the zoning and what it pertains to. That what we're discussing tonight is the zone right change? Right now, what I'm discussing. We're, we're talking about the zone change. Do they feel the same way? What my questions? It's not about how we feel, it's about what, what we have advertised this, zone, this hearing to be about a zone change. And is there anything else that you would like to say pertaining to the zone change? Well, all, of the, all, the, all the comments that I made pertaining to the zone change, I feel are pertinent to, the, to, to everything, to the, zone, okay. to the zoning change itself. Who owns our, who's representing Orange Avenue for a Are they seeking the zone change? I'm sorry? Are they seeking the zone change? Yes. <laughs> they are. So they are pertinent into the information of the zone change. No, what we're talking about tonight is about how the zone change impacts the downtown area and all of the elements that pertain to a zone change. Not about the financing of it, not about the pilots, not about all of who well, bought this, the property and when. if this financing and process was, was not conducted properly, it doesn't lead to a zone change. That's my point. Ed, I believe the financing, if you let excuse me, me finish Ed, speaking. No, I will allow you to speak on the zone change. That's why we're here. I have told every other person in this room and in the rooms before at every public hearing. I am not treating you any differently as I have treated everyone in this room. We are speaking about the zone change. Okay. If, okay? I believe the entire process leading up to the zone change is inappropriate. What I am calling for is some type of an investigation to figure out what's going on here. Nobody seems to have a clue. We're here how many times now? This is, this is unreasonable, and you can see the audience here. Okay. I think uh, the, 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 last, the last comment I have with the zone change is that I don't have the trust in the board to do it. Okay, we don't have the trust in the board to conduct a budget, to, to uh, put together a budget. The New York State Comptroller said that you're misleading the, the Again, budget. Ed, we're talking about a zone change. Are you misleading us on the zone change? Are you here? Listen to me. Listen. 
We're not here campaigning, Ed. We're here to yes, talk about is. a zone change. Right. Okay? okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's trying to knock me out of office. How dare he? <laughs> Jim Genettino, I have very simple questions. You know that. Are you going to vote on a vote a zone change tonight? Um, I think we'll know that as soon as we're done with public comment, Jim. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll know that as soon as we're done with pu public comment. Yeah, we have to hear from everyone first. No, I didn't say that. I said we're, then, okay. then we will know. Uh, one at a time. I'm sorry, I, can, I yeah, can we let Jim speak? <laughs> Thanks, Sam. Second question. If you're not going to vote tonight, how many times are we going to drag people out here for a maybe vote? Now, I don't know if I have correct information or not, but I understand that the applicant hasn't come to an agreement with the school board. That is correct. So then why are we here? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Sure. <clears throat> and Jim, I will answer your question as soon as we're done with public comment. Rich Cop, 88 Lonegan Drive. Uh, uh, as per the zone change, would there be any change to the two-lane Chestnut Avenue as per the zone change? Would it remain two-lane where the left lane branches off under the trestle and the right lane goes up to two lanes yeah. and one turns left and one turn right? Is yeah. that going to stay You're talking the about same? the one way, the one way out, right? On, the one way out. out. Yes, yes. But on the right-hand side, Chestnut Street yeah. comes from one lane to two lanes. One is left and one is right. Correct. Mm -hmm. That will remain the same. That's remain the same. Yes. Okay. And why can't this be done without the zone change? This is about the zone change. Now, why do you have to have a zone change because to do Because the use is not permitted there. So, in other words, they could not build this building unless they got a zone change. Correct. I thought it was zoned for residential. It's, it's zoned commercial. Oh, it is? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? I move that the um, public hearing be closed. Do I have I a think second? Oops. Second. I'm sorry, Jack. Yeah, you you want to speak on the motion, God? Uh, well, I, I have just think that we have given the uh, the community a, a lot of opportunities to speak on the on this zone change, and so I think it's time to to close that to close the hearing. Okay, I have a motion, and I have second. a second, Mr. Hagen. Uh, yes, if that's what we all want. Mrs. Corrigan. Yes. Mr. Uh, Mr. Byrne. You're going to abstain. Um, I'll abstain. Okay. Mr. Meehan? Yes. And I vote yes. The motion is carried. The public hearing is now closed. Um, I would like to give the board some information um, and the public that um, the school district has um, informed me that they are continuing to negotiate with the school, um, I'm sorry, with the Orange Avenue Associates regarding a pilot. Um, I believe they are having their last of meetings will be this week. Um, that will be either they will come to an agreement or they will not come to an agreement. But um, they have assured me that this will be the last week that they will be negotiating um, and it will be a yes, we have an agreement or a no, we will not have an agreement. Um, that being said, um, I'd like to hear from the board what your pleasure is with regards to voting um, on the zone change. Um. We had, uh, I had received a copy of a letter from uh, the petitioner's attorney. And that letter, and I'm going to hope that, that uh, are you going to represent the petitioner? Yes, Mr. The Jeff Jeffrey Goldstein is Jeff here to represent. Is, uh, yes. Josh is not here. The president's not here, but uh, one of the officers of the corporation is here. Um, I really want a fish or cut bait here. Uh, and uh, uh, the letter that we received, and you can address this, Jeff, uh, from your attorney, seemed to me that negotiations were over. 
and that uh, the parties were not able to meet, reach an agreement. I also had a conversation yesterday with the mayor who had met with Dr. Adams, the superintendent of schools, and he outlined the proposed to her and she outlined to me the proposals and counter proposals. And I think there were anywhere from it's how you know, like four proposals, four counter proposals, four or five or anyway. From what you told me yesterday, Mayor, the parties were not within shouting distance of each other. So I'm very reluctant. I mean, we said that if they didn't reach an agreement with the school board, we were going to vote against this, uh, this zone change. And that's basically, I want to end it. Now, I, I'll, you know, I'd be glad to listen to Jeff to tell me why you think that since, you know, you've been negotiating this since, what, February, May, what? February, March. February, March. That suddenly you're this far apart that you're going to come together. Uh, uh, it, it seems very doubtful to me, but if you want to make the case, you know, I'm, you know, I'm willing to drag these people <laughs> one more time, as, as Jim said. You know, when you drag him out, you drag me out, and I have to put on a suit and tie, Jim. So, um, Mr. Meehan, I just want to let you know sure. that um, I did let both parties know that, um, they, you know, that that negotiation will go on between now and October 6th, but that the board would be prepared to actually not extend past October 6th to vote on the zone change. Well, I, I don't so October mind. 6th would be our board meeting. It would go no later than that. We would, wow. the board would be prepared to vote at the board meeting on October I'd 6th like or before if, before. if time were I mean, if, if the situation warranted, we could vote before. Well, what, let me ask uh, my colleague. Not after. May I? Yeah. Excuse, uh, let me just make sure Jack is done. Jack, are you done? Or do no, you I just want to ask Frank when, how soon he's, I know you're going to be going out of town, and when will you be coming back? Back on the 30th. Uh, October 1st or the 30th of September. So you'll be back for the board meeting on the 6th, that's correct? That's oh, I'll workshop. be here for that. The 6th is not the oh, workshop, the 1st no, is. First. Right. Well, he'd be back on the 1st, and maybe we could, we could. Yeah, I mean, if, yeah. if it warranted, we certainly could do it before, but I have, um, I have notified both parties that um, it is not my wish to continue farther past October 6th. That we yeah, I'm like, voting on the 6th. Yeah, we would like to vote on the 6th, that we are not going to drag this out any longer. Can I ask a question? Sure, fine. We don't need an expert lawyer on zone changes, do we? We've got one right We've sitting right over there. Oh, okay. I'm so, I apologize. <laughs> okay. I thought maybe we wanted that. <laughs> okay. We have okay. we have Rob. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is there any other board member that would like Not to speak? Something, Jack, did you want to hear from the applicant? Yes, I'd like to. What uh, the mayor is saying is true, and what Jack, what you're saying is true. We've received back from uh, the school board an offer which is quite a distance away from where we thought we were at. Honestly, it uh, has gotten, uh, the numbers have gotten larger, not smaller, from the school district. Um, school district still, in my opinion, does not understand what the pilot means and what the pilot does to this project. Uh, come to think of it, the numbers that they gave us back that we shared with the board are more taxes than we would pay under a normal circumstance without a pilot. So we are a distance away, but I will advise you that we are still talking to them. Uh, we believe in this project, we've always believed in this project, and we would like to at least uh, wait the week, the week and a half, uh, let us get through the Jewish holidays and meet with the school board and see if we can get a conclusion. And if we cannot get a conclusion on the 6th, we will tell the board where we stand, what our, uh, our prerogatives are at that point in time, and let you vote. Uh, I do hope that you will allow us to continue at least our portion of the presentation on that day, which will not be long, so we, that we can make our case to you. Thank you. Rejected. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else from the board? Comments? Concerns? Okay. 
All right, so uh, what is the board's pleasure? Public hearing closed, so. Yes. So just adjourn. Okay, yeah. we're, we're, everyone is okay? We'll, we'll adjourn? Yeah, I, I think it's important. I guess I do have something to say after all. I think it's very, very important that everyone gets the opportunity, meeting Orange Avenue Associates and the school board, to make things and try and make things work. This project is so important for the village of Suffern. And understanding the challenges that the school board's having and understanding the challenges that Orange Avenue Associates is having, I think that we do need to give this extra week so that therefore we can try and work this out. Because if it doesn't work out, we don't have a project. And then I don't know where we go from there. Because we've been doing this for 10 years. We've had five other people come in with plans that did not work out either. So we're kind of getting to the 11th and 12th year and we really need to start looking and deciding where yes. we want to be in the future and how we want to handle that in the future. So I definitely agree with doing October 6th for the vote. Okay, so we will um, adjourn this meeting to October 6th for our vote. Uh, thank you all for coming. Who made the motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved.